This week I've been spending a lot of time trying to get my VS Code working well. Unlike many other people, I don't tend to use Visual Studio. I used it plenty at Microsoft, coding .NET and C Sharp and all that. I'm just sick of it. I just really like VS Code. I like its lightweight. It's fast. I just don't want to use Visual Studio. And I shouldn't have to. That's my, that's my opinion, my hot take. So Visual Studio Code should just work, right? VS Code should just work. It says right here, setting up VS Code for Unreal Engine. It almost seems like it's uh, supported out of the box from Unreal. And you can go through all these steps if you want and um, try to get it working. But my experience is that even after all of this, it's slow and buggy, especially the autocomplete. If you follow these instructions as they're laid out, the autocomplete is just not very good. It's slow and, and not always correct. I'll include this link for those who want to follow it. It's, it's a lot simpler than what I did, um, but in my opinion, my setup is actually better. So, so my VS Code setup is a little different. Um, I am actually using an extension called Clang D. Clang D is an amazing, amazing service where it provides, as you can see here, code completion, errors, warnings, helps you do like go to definition um, and references and things like that. I don't know. Let's say I wanted to look at Git World Spawn Actor. My F12 just works. This is not always the case uh, in a VS Code setup, especially before I uh, fixed it. So out of the box, Clang D did not just work for me. There was actually a lot I had to do. So out of the box for me, Clang D was just full of errors. Most of them just garbage. So this is my my script slash wrapper for builds. There's actually a mode of Unreal Build Tool to generate a Clang database, and so I tried that to make my to to make uh, VS Code work, and it did. It did technically work. So that generates this compile commands file here, which is essentially essentially a list of every single file that was compiled for the project. And so you can see it's huge and it tells you, you know, this is the file that was compiled and we ran this command on it, which uh, is in my case, playing CL and then the um, like response file or whatever, the build response file out of the box you will not see this clang cl.exe you're not probably using clang unless you i mean you're only using it if you know you're using it and this was really part of the secret to getting the whole thing to work so originally i was using vs code with msvc which is the microsoft um, visual c compiler is that what it stands for anyways it's the microsoft c compiler and so it was kind of working. Some stuff was um, some stuff was working. Some stuff had its red squiggles and errors. So what I did was I switched to using Clang. And so I installed Clang myself. I'm not using anything bundled in um, into Unreal. So I installed LLVM 16.0.4, which is what um, the version of Unreal I'm using supports. And then I set my build configuration to be Clang. Uh, and then I had to include compiler version latest. It wasn't working. Um, if I didn't do that, I don't really know why. And that got Clang D working. But then fast build broke. Look at this. With fast build, we had 99.6% of our code cache. That's because it was a clean build. I hadn't changed anything. Um, took five minutes and 47 seconds. Completely clean engine and project. Now that might not seem that useful because just don't clean, you might be saying. But sometimes when you make a change in a header and Unreal decides, hey, let's recompile the entire engine, you know, you're suddenly stuck for 40 minutes on a good computer waiting. And so I just can't deal with that. And so I set up fast build. It's super easy. You're basically losing some disk space and in, and in exchange, you don't have to recompile things over and over again. If we look at my disk space for fast build cache. So yeah, I mean, I've never cleaned it out. It's got every file I've ever compiled basically. 
um, probably many copies. I don't exactly know how it works, but uh, 112 gigabytes. But that is a small price to pay for a, you know, 10x reduction in, um, in a clean build. So yeah, fast build is awesome, but it turns out the Unreal Engine fast build executor doesn't support compiling on Windows with Clang CL. I think it's time for a break. here's where I'm at and I think that this is going to be a common theme throughout the life of the channel which is I want VS Code to work well I want to use Clang D I want to compile with Clang CL and I want fast build to work so the only way that that's going to happen is if I do it myself so in the engine we have fastbuild.cs and this is basically represents the fast build executor so I guess in Unreal Engine or Unreal Build Tool, really, there's a concept of executors. So, I mean, this is just my understanding. I'm not an expert necessarily on this specific part of Unreal Build Tool, but essentially there are executors and you can turn them on and off. Like in Fast Build, we're turning it on in our build configuration. And then the build tool is giving Fast Build a collection of actions to basically choose whether or not it wants to, to accept them and execute them and I believe the entry point for this is execute actions async where it gets a list of actions and um, basically decides whether or not it thinks it knows what to do um, through some some logic trying to detect what platform we're on and things like that generating a BFF file um, BFF being a like fast build configuration file essentially of the list of actions and we can go look at one in a second and then executing that BFF file. So the problem I ran into was actually in the BFF generation. So if I look at one of the BFFs I generated before I switched to Clang, so this is when I was compiling with um, Visual Studio or MSVC I mean. You can see in this BFF file, it's a list basically of every every action we need to take to compile the project. So you can see action one, action two, action three, all the way down to however many actions there are. It could be 3,000 or something in a full build. And you can see we take an executable, which in this case is cl.exe. So this is probably what many people's fast build BFFs will look like. Um, and then it takes an argument, which is like the MS build response file, and then an output, which is your OBJ file, and um, fast build just figures it out. And the way that it figures it out is by using your um, compiler that you've configured up above. So in this case, Unreal has two compilers configured, but the one that we care about is this Unreal Engine compiler, where it's configured to be a root of the... Uh, msvc x64 folder executable cl.exe some extra files doesn't matter this is just dll's inside of um, this x64 folder and and one actually from somewhere else that um, unreal engine people have decided they need and then you set the compiler family and in this case it's to msvc and so the error i was running into was i had set Unreal to compile with Clang, but then the actions were getting sent to um, fast build, the fast build executor, and the fast build executor was saying, I don't know what these flags are you're trying to pass to the compiler. Or really, I was getting compiler errors 
but I didn't realize that at the time. But I was getting compiler errors from MSVC saying, what what are you doing? Um, I don't understand what's happening. And the reason for that is even though Clang CL is like the Clang wrapper for, or it's really like a Clang compiler with the MSVC tr translation layer built in. I mean, I'm probably butchering it for a compiler nerd who really knows what they're talking about, but essentially you should be able to take MSVC arguments and pass them to Clang CL and not have a problem. The problem was that there are actually Clang arguments that you can't pass to MSVC, right? So, you know, Clang CL will take MSVC arguments, but MSVC won't take Clang arguments. And so that those are the errors I was getting. And it took me a while to figure this out because I'm not really that familiar with the internal workings of FastBuilt. This is my first time working with it. And what I found was that my actions were being generated correctly, but the compiler there's basically, as far as I can tell, there's nothing inside this fast build CS that can correctly create this compiler block. Um, at least for what I'm trying to do, which is compile with Clang CL. So what I had to do was first add a section here. So I'll I'll have my modified version of this file on my um, my Git T or maybe my GitHub or or wherever. The link will be in the description. But essentially. The way that this works is they're look they're searching the command path, which is um, the command path. I believe is I don't I don't remember. I think it's it's essentially like the full path of Clang CL or you know the compiler executable and the arguments. I I believe um, they're searching that for like Win sixty four or Microsoft. So you know Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, you know, MSVC. They're searching for that in the path. And if they find it, they're mapping it to a build type. So the build types are either Windows or Apple. I don't really know how this is going to work on Linux. I wish I did. But if you're a Linux person watching, I'm sorry. It probably will just work for you better because I think Unreal probably just uses Clang. So actually, in that case, Linux people have it easy, is my guess. So if you're on Linux and you want to use Clang D and VS Code, this is probably way easier. And so I had to add here to search for clangcl.exe. It's kind of the best thing I could think of and map it to Windows. But then when I did that, I noticed that in my BFF, I still had MSVC configured as my compiler. So this is what it looks like now. I'm not too sure if there's something else I need to be adding here, like those extra files or things like that. I think the extra files this section here, I believe this might only be used for when you are distributing with FastBuild, and I'm not really doing distribution. Um, I'm only using FastBuild for caching. So I, I don't think this matters to me, but maybe if I start distributing my, my builds, maybe it will matter. So anyways, I can show you how I did this. So essentially there's all this code here that you end up hitting this path because you're a Windows build and it it just assumes, oh, you're Windows, so we're operating inside the MSVC folder and that's just not the case. So just to get it working, I kind of hacked together a solution where I I add the, the path to where I have LLVM installed. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, probably a better way to, to find where LLVM is installed, but I just add this path and then I got rid of all this garbage I just commented it out, but I should probably just delete it. But I need to have a system for what if I want to switch back to MSVC, so I want to make it at least not terrible. And there's a little bit more I had to comment out. And then I add compiler family Clang CL. Oh, there is a place where I add the executable. Oh, here. I add executable root Clang clangcl.exe. So really all I needed to do was add this text, this text, and this. I made a modification here where I, instead of MSVC, it's clangcl. And that was it. That was pretty much everything I did. That was it. I am able to run FastBuild now using clangcl. Because I'm using clangcl, I think the, the compile commands that the generate Clang databases generating are actually functional. I don't fully understand why 
I was able to generate a Clang database from the MSVC compiled Unreal, but that Clang D didn't like it. I just don't know enough about it to know why that didn't work. But switching to Clang worked. Oh, I will say one note about switching to Clang. There's going to be a ton of warnings. And so what I did was I, in the build configuration, I had to add um, default warning level off. I know it's not ideal, but at least for the engine side of things, so there's multiple build configurations. So I probably could just have this inside of the build configuration in the engine. And that, that would probably work because I, I want warnings on my project. Um, and Clang has more useful warnings anyway. So, okay, so this one is in the engine. So this is engine saved Unreal Build Tool Build Configuration. Default warning level off. And then on mine, I'll turn it off. Let's, uh, oh Lord. Uh, let's see if I get a ton of errors. Man, it seems like uh, seems like everything's working. You know, it's amazing how much work I put into the game this week without actually opening Unreal Engine and doing anything in the game. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in spending time on your tools and your workflow to improve your life later on down the line. Being able to make that kind of decision is what sets us apart from being indie versus working in a big corporation. Like, I have the time to be able to spend to make my tools the way I want them and working well for me. If there's anything in this video that you think could use a more focused, guided, tutorial type video, let me know. I'm happy to make them. I just don't know what the audience is for Fast Build or Clang D or anything like that. I'm hoping to continue to be able to make these kind of devlog videos and tutorial videos, both small and large, depending on what people are interested in and, and what kind of traction I get. YouTuber cliche moment, but it does help to like and subscribe. You know, if I go from 10 subscribers to 11 subscribers, that's a 10% increase and it's a really big deal to me.